welcome to my channel. Today I'll be starting about a uh, uh, first osteology part called the mandible. Mandible or the lower jaw is the largest and the one of the strongest bone of the face. It's typically you know horseshoe shaped structure hmm, which has in um, sub, sub, which lodges the teeth here in this region and has got two ramus. We'll be talking about it later on. Let's go for the body. You know the body comprises from here till up this region. This is the body. Okay. The body of the uh, uh, mandible has two parts, right? This is the outer part and as well as we come across the another part, it is the inner part, the outer and the inner surface. Uh, let's go for the inner, it has an outer surface, inner surface and a superior as well as an upper or in lower border. Let's go for the body, the first one. In the body, the first thing what you find is something called as the symphysis menti. This particular thing, you know the pubic symphysis in the pelvic bone, here we have symphysis menti. It's a line, you know, this particular line, this particular line, which joins the two half of the mandible. It's a marked by a faint ridge here, if you please observe in this region. And then this particular thing, what I have now, I'm going to color this one. This is the mental protuberance. The mental protuberance, the word mentum is chin, you know. It's uh, it, it is in triangular projection seen in this region, and uh, the inferior, you know, down lateral, inferior lateral um, angles of this uh, protuberance this forms the mental tubercle. If you observe, we have something called occipital protuberance in the occipital bone. Here we have something called mental protuberance. Next one is immediately next to that, you come across a foramen here, please, that is called as the for mental foramen. Now this uh, just uh, lies below the premolar teeth. This is where with the inferior olivular artery, vein and nerve just emerge out after supplying in the mandibular canal. Next, what is it? Next, what I'll just erase this part and let's go for something called, this is the ramus of mandible, right? And uh, this is the sharp anterior border. Continue this line. You come to this line, go up till straight line. Obviously, it's not a line, okay? This this particular is called as the oblique line, which is uh, continuing from the anterior border of the uh, ramus, going downwards towards the mental tubercle. They just run towards that region. Next, we have something called incisive fossa. Now, continuing. Let's go after the incisive fossa. Straight Let's go inside now. Inside shows you number one, uh, something called as a mylohyoid line, a prominent. Uh, a ridge that just runs obliquely downwards from the third molar. This is the third molar. This just goes down from here. This prominent ridge is the mylohyoid line. Below the mylohyoid line, we have something called as a submandibular fossa, and above that will be sublingual fossa for respectively for submandibular and sublingual salivary glands lodgement. And then this part, okay, this part that I'm showing you right now here, this part is having one, two, three, four. The Genia tubercles, which are responsible for the attachment of one few muscles, such as genoglossus, genohyoid, and few muscles will come and attach uh, attach in this region. The upper border is very simple; it provides lodgement for the teeth. And the lower border, there is this is the base of the mandible, and uh, in the midline you have something called as a digastic fossa. This is for the passing of this muscle, the digastric muscle, which just passes from here, the anterior belly and the posterior belly. It just passes from here. Let's go for the ramus. This is the ramus. You know, when the uh, pelvic bone has rami, this is also a ramus. We have two here. The ramus is quadrilateral in shape, has in, uh, two surfaces. This is the uh, lateral surface. This is the medial surface. It has four borders. That is, it has got the four borders, the upper border, lower border, anterior, posterior, and the coronoid and the condyle process. The lateral surface is, uh, bears, is flat. It bears a number of oblique ridges. The medial surface shows lots of things. Number one, this hole, you know, the mandibular foramen, which is just uh, lies in the center of the ramus. Uh, it leads to the mandibular canal inside. I'll just go for the next uh, here. Uh, here, you can observe. Here is the mandibular foramen. It leads to the canal, mandibular canal. And then the anterior margin, this region, what I'm shading now, is called as the lingula, which is a little tongue-shaped structure directed towards the head of the mandible, you can observe, this is the head of the mandible, the neck of the mandible, this is directed towards the head of the mandible. Then we have something called as an um, mylohyoid groove just below the mandibular foramen, we have this one, this is the mylohyoid groove and runs downwards and lost somewhere in the submandibular fossa, I just lost there. And the upper border is very thin, you know, this very thin and uh, the curve downwards forming mandibular notch, this is another name, sigmoid notch, we have something called as a lower border which is just a content in the base of the mandible in the backwards, the anterior border is very thin, please observe here, the anterior border is very thin, the posterior border is typically 
thick and you can see the, like a flattened triangle shape structure having many features because this was also called as the head of the mandible and this is the neck of the mandible head articulates with the temporal bone leading formation of temporomandibular joint. The coronoid process is a flattened triangle upward projection. The coronoid means crow's beak here and the condyle process is a strong upward projection. And uh, it's covered by fibrocartilage and one important thing is just below the head here. We have something, it's a constriction here. This is called the pterygomandibular uh, uh, neck, we have pterygoid fovea for the attachment of pterygomandibular raphae. It has ab ab abundance of attachments, gives rights to your muscles. That is the uh, most important if I see the medial aspect. Here, masseter will be attached. Here, you will have temporalis in this region. Buccinator comes and attaches in this region. Also, the platysma towards the base this region and we have the uh, depressor anguli oris attachment here or the facial muscles of expressions depressor labiae inferalis just below the mental foramen and uh, mentalis the muscle of doubt is attached here and in the internal part if I go to the internal part lots of muscles again will be attached the same thing the temporalis will be attached in this one lateral pterygoid this entire area is occupied by medial pterygoid and uh, this the mylohyoid the muscle which is the ray line is present for that mylohyoid line as for the mylohyoid muscle, the floor of the oral cavity. So this is a basic simple method of teaching mandible. This is the anatomical position facing towards the examiner. And you can observe the different different shapes. This is in you know, eight changes in mandible. It's in about eight to nine years. And uh, this is just four to five years of mandible of infants and uh, less than infants sorry a little bit more than infants. This is result. The eight changes you can observe. I don't have an edentulous mandible here. That's all about the mandible. I hope you have understood a simple anatomy. Just remember body, gramus, body has outer inner surface, upper and lower border. Then we have this lateral surface, inside is a medial surface, an upper border, lower border, anterior border and a posterior border. Two processes, this is the coronoid, the crow's beak and the flattened sharp one. This one, the triangular shape is the condyle process. Mandible is very important. It gets fractured at the angle, at the uh, front region. Just a very important bone from osteology point of view. Try to answer this in detail. Thank you. Hope you have enjoyed my video. Do subscribe.